we were kind of striking out for a while there, just staying in loud places or places we weren't super stoked about. But as soon as we got here, we knew we could relax. So Steel Horse is run by a former Pan American Highway traveler, Yvette, who drove her motorcycle from Colombia all the way down to Argentina. She returned to Colombia because she loved it so much and instead got some horses to take care of on her nice ranch. The horses are definitely taken care of really well and they seem super happy. We're really enjoying our time at Steel Horse. Even though we were four separate groups, we were all able to cook, eat, and relax in the common area together. It's super comfortable in this nice hostel. Whoa, I just thought, what is Graham looking at there? How did this get into the van? Man, Graham always finds the things for us. <laughs> I wonder if this is one where you're not supposed to touch it. I don't think so. It doesn't look that deadly, but... It's um, fuzzy, though. I mean, some of those could be poisonous. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we should touch it. I think we should probably get it out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how we're going to, though. Uh oh. Definitely don't want the pets to touch it. Okay, let's let him outside. Yeah, now we've seen the tarantula and the fuzzy thing. It's just crazy that got inside. Well, we got some weird news about the engine fan replacement, so we decided let's stick over here one more day and get some van chores done, get on the phone, try and figure out how we can get this spare part down here to South America. After waiting two months, now they say it's back ordered from the factory. I thought this whole time it was in the mail. <laughs> so, a bit upsetting. Got a number higher up in the company I'm talking to now. Not good. Whenever we have this closed and there's an animal sitting here usually, we always have to ask him to move to hit this switch. What we'd really like to do is put a switch over here somewhere on the outside. So yeah, let's get into this project. In this box, you got most of the good stuff. You know, stripping wires, electrical tape, little extra cable, fuses. And underneath that box here, we got the terminals. So these kind of things go on the ends of cables when you splice them together. And then of course for doing this kind of work, you need a multimeter here so you can check if there's current in the cable. And then here's the pack of switches I got. So this is the switch that we're gonna install today. I got this on Amazon in the US. So it'll surface mount, go on the outside, the cables on the inside. You can use these things to kind of keep the cables out of the way. I'm gonna use a couple of these. Okay, so after cleaning up the last stuff, you can see here, I kind of attached it up here. The rest of the cable seems pretty solid there. The first step is to figure out what all these cables are. So here, this goes right through there. We have a propane detector installed over there. So that's what that is. Now this one here was the heat tape that goes up there. And then this last one that comes out is for the pump. So the switch only goes on one side, the positive or the negative. DC just has positive or negative. Whereas in your house, you have AC, which has three cables, one that's ground. But here we just got two. So the switch is on this line, goes up to the switch, comes back, goes into the pump. And the other line just goes right into the pump there. So this is where I'm gonna tie in the new switch. So it's possible I can use the cables from the other one. I'm gonna undo that switch, grab it over here, since we're gonna put the new switch on this wall. So now that we're messing with stuff that has electricity flowing to it, come over in here, the fuse box, and remove the fuse from the line that we're using. Let's verify there's no power going to this. Okay, safe to work. Okay, so I got the old switch disconnected. We decided to leave it there for when we reinstall the heat tape. I'll probably use it again. So got that secured here, and this will be the line for the new switch. So now I gotta put a cable up around here to the new switch location. So I made this little template here that's it's just slightly larger than the size the hole has to be. And we're gonna put it here and draw where we like it. Okay, so there we go. That's our spot. We gotta drill the corners and then jigsaw there. So here's our little jigsaw we keep in the trunk. 
It's pretty low power, so we can actually run this off the Vans inverter, which feels super awesome to be running your power tools off the electrical system that you created. We even used this to cut the hole in the roof when we installed the second roof vent fan. Awesome! Oh, perfect! Okay, so here's the switch. And you take off this face plate and use these screws. Screw this guy in here. So this is the extra cable I carry around. It's a little oversized. 12 AWG is the size. And when you have that stranded wire, which is tons of little braided cables, then it's better for the rotation of the van, the shaking. Get out the proper length and start attaching it to this side. Then we'll figure out how to run it over there. So the first step is to disconnect this. So you slide that there, pull it along. Got two pieces now. Now the second step is to strip back that plastic from the cable. So you use one of these wire strippers and we find here 12 AWG on the stranded side and you clamp that on and pull it off. I have pulled it right off and there's no broken strands of conductor on the inside. That's how you want it. Boom, perfect on the second go too. So now we have to do this to the other side here. Kind of clean up these so we can get a nice solid connection. What's nice is to split this into two flat pieces and I did it on the other end as well. And so now you're gonna connect these and these and then twist both of those together and then you get a really solid connection. Okay, you can see I've got those two different sides connected and now I'm going to twist them all together. Okay, so now that that's a really solid electrical connection there, you choose the right size of these and twist it on the end and then put some electrical tape. Okay, so I got this one on and now you want to test for good connection by trying to pull anything out. It doesn't pull out. You just keep spinning that until it won't spin anymore. So now you just electrical tape that and do the other one. When working with electricity, it's always nice to double check things are going well. So here I'm going to connect this to the cable here and we should see 12 at least. Okay, 13.8 volts coming through. So we got the connection going right and I'll go remove that fuse and we'll connect this other end. Okay, so for this end, I got the cable routed up here. So the difference now is that instead of separating them, you're gonna roll these really nice and tight. You gotta fit this over the end here, and then we'll get the crimp tool. You can see here, I fit that over that one, and I crimped it twice here, and it's not pulling off. So that's what you need to check. And then this will just slide right over that blade there. This is called a blade terminal. It should be good to test it out the first time. Yeah. You wanna try that switch, Emily? Okay. There it is. Yeah. Okay, there it wow. Switch that now, try again. Hey, you love the new switch? Yay! Good work. One of the biggest van upgrades in a while, For huh? For sure. Oh my gosh. So there you have it. No cables up here. I routed it through there. Put another cable tie here, back to there. And I got some extra cable if I ever need to mess with it. Whew, one project done today. But I had another one planned, a little electrical, which Hopefully it shouldn't be too hard, although the access is really hard. The issue is that we installed back here by the bed. Got everything kind of taken apart right now. But we have this DC outlet right here. The plan is to switch out that for a USB, which would be really easy to plug in our phones. Problem is getting in here. I think I'm gonna take this off and I should be able to do this. Sweet, well I was able to get this one out pretty easy. And that one actually had those blade connectors like the switch we just installed. But the new one just has a couple cables. So I'm gonna have to cut off these connectors we had here, strip the cable, and use one of these with some electrical tape to connect this up. Let's give it a test, see if this will charge my phone. Oh yeah. Well, maybe you saw it coming, but I actually had to undo it and redo it kind of through the wall because I didn't think about, this has to go from the front, that has to go from the back, whatever. As you can see, my phone is charging which is super nice that whoever's on this side of the bed can have this USB port. And it's a lot more solid than the other port was. Okay, so finished product. You can see here we got the bed made again. And here we got a nice USB outlet. So the third and final van project for the day, uh, probably least excited about this one, has to do with how that engine fan has been going bad for 
months now and we had one coming in we thought yesterday they tell us it might not be coming no news i guess so in the meantime that fan that's going bad is the auxiliary fan there's two in here behind this radiator right here and between the radiators there's this piece of foam that's hanging down not that excited about it it's a lot of disassembly so i can get that seated well So we got this thing out. Check out how dirty. <laughs> Oof. Get on some dusty roads. Good thing you're keeping up with maintenance. All right, so got that foam piece in there at the top that keeps the heat from flowing out so that your fans are getting all cold air coming in through these heat exchangers. All right, that's it for the van. It's really nice having the van all put together again with those modifications. I got my phone charging up there, which helps clear room to sit here on the bench. And then over here, if I want to use the sink, it's just right outside there. And I did another little van hack. Now that we have this full-size mirror in here, I installed this thing here to keep it completely open when we're using it. So pretty stoked about all these little changes, nice little things that add up. Let's go to Emily now. So the free tour season in Colombia is only three months, but luckily Colombia has set it up so that you can renew your visa completely online, as long as everything goes well. <laughs> Since you can renew completely online, I started a month before I knew they were going to expire because there's no time frame. As, long, as soon as you know I'm not going to be able to leave the country before my visa expires, you can start to do your paperwork online. So before even attempting to go online to do the paperwork, you have to create a PDF, your passport, your Colombian stamp, and a flight out of the country if you're a backpacker or a traveler. But if you have a car, you can uh, include your temporary vehicle import permit. And for me, since the import permit's not my name, I included the import permit and then also our marriage certificate I don't really know if I needed to do that, I just don't like being denied. <laughs> you have to create this PDF, which is super easy on an iPhone. You just go into the Notes app and you can scan each one of the papers and then export it as a PDF. These PDFs are going to be pretty big and the website will only accept PDFs that are less than one megabyte. Pretty crazy, I don't know why. So you have to go on to compresspdf.com and compress it and it's super easy it's not really that much to worry about but you should probably do this step before you even get onto the website because the website can time out if you try and do it while you're filling out the paperwork for the flight out of the country book your ticket three months later after your visa expires so that they know that you'll leave before your second visa is up you can cancel the flight and get all of the money back from the flight like it doesn't matter where the flight goes either it just has to go to another country so now that you have all of that random paperwork together you can head over to the migration website that I've linked in the description you can try and do the paperwork in English but I learned that a couple of the fields don't actually work if you do that it would just be better just to do it in Spanish and have Google Translate open on another tab so you can flick back and forth and try and <laughs> translate stuff that you don't understand. Bureaucratic words, they don't really make sense even for people that understand every Spanish word. <laughs> you can select the option Permiso Temporal de Permanencia para Prorrogar Permanencia. When filling out the form, we put Bogota as the closest office. Doing it that way didn't really end up working for us. <laughs> when we went to the offices, they, say, they said it didn't actually even show up in their system. Just to make it more smooth, I would just say the closest small city to wherever you are. If you do have to go there, and you probably won't, but if you have to go there, the lines will probably be shorter and you probably won't waste a lot of time waiting as much as you would in a big city. So after filling out the form, you should end up on a success page and immediately check your email. If you did not get an email, something didn't work, so you have to fill it out again. That's actually what happened to us. We didn't get the email, but we didn't realize that we needed an email. If you didn't get an email, you have to fill it out again, and that's the only way that you know that you're in their system. Just try again with just your the same fields, but if it doesn't work so many times, just change something like the city. We didn't realize that we needed to get this email, so we ended up going to the offices, which actually wasn't that, that bad. Um, she basically just told us we have to fill out the form again online without her help. Like, 
She told us where the closest internet cafe was. Luckily, we have a nice internet cafe right here. <laughs> so it only took us maybe five minutes to fill out the form again, especially because we already had the PDFs ready. And then we just walked right back over to her. And within an hour, it was completely done. She had approved our request. And then we just had to go to a bank and pay a fee. And when we paid the fee, we got another email and that was the actual visa that we did print out. All in all, pretty easy process. So for doing the TIP, we thought it would be just as easy since we had to fill out a form online, but it ended up being super hard. <laughs> we did fill out the form online. We then had to go to the offices to get it authorized, which means that we were waiting there for so long just for them to say, okay, you're authorized or no. Danny ended up having to wait in the offices for hours. It took so long that we ended up having to sleep at the offices. <laughs> After there was a quick inspection, she just had to check the VIN number and honestly she just wanted to see inside our Casa Rodante <laughs> and she brought her co-workers with her. <laughs> so after giving a quick tour to all of the ladies in the office, <laughs> we were authorized and the TIP was renewed. We just had one more hoop to jump through which is getting more insurance. And getting insurance honestly <laughs> was even harder because so many offices turned us down even though our paperwork was already in their system they said no because our plate was different from Colombian plates they only have enough room in their system for six numbers on a plate because that's typical for Colombian plates but of course our our plate has seven they couldn't figure it out I mean it kind of happened the first time we got insurance as well which delayed us leaving Cartagena for a little while luckily we had a fixer from helping us get the van in and she was able to fix it for us but this time we didn't really have anyone and we just were trying to talk to us, all the insurance people trying to beg them to let us <laughs> get this done but eventually we were able to get three more months of insurance and now we are completely legal with new visas, TIP and insurance for the next three months even though I think we might be leaving Colombia soon, we wanted to spend a little bit more time here before making our way to Ecuador without a car. It would be so easy just to <laughs> extend your visa and I wish we could have stopped there. <laughs> but <laughs> continuing on with more paperwork wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I just found a tarantula. The thing is like the biggest thing I've ever Where is seen. He's hiding over there? Yeah. He just walked right by you guys. But we can't stay here for long, so now we're gonna head over to Pereira because Danny found me a vegan restaurant to try out today. So we just went over to Gigi's vegan restaurant, and man, that was probably one of the best vegan restaurants I've been to in Colombia. We got some cauliflower popcorn, which had some barbecue sauce on it. We also got some bao buns that were super tasty, and then after that there was arepas, and it's so much fun to try vegan food that's also uh, modeled after normal food from the country that we're in. It's probably the best vegan food that I can hope to find because a lot of vegan restaurants just have, you know, American food or the trendy thing. But seeing local stuff made veganized is so awesome. So I was really excited to try some arepas. Pirera is actually a bigger city than we expected. We thought it was just going to be a little town kind of atmosphere but it's a, it's pretty big it's got an airport and has a pretty extensive bus system like Bogota yeah fortunately Pereira is big enough that they have some drones here <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to recover from all the scratches I got out in the jungle oh that was ridiculous and we're probably just gonna get the cheaper one since what if I lose it again <laughs> yeah. it lasted three years yeah. though so you know I didn't do too bad since it's been so long all of these drones are an upgrade the place might even buy the parts from the old drone because the batteries don't fit right. but uh, yeah I'm excited to uh, do a little shop in here in Pereira we'll see how it goes <laughs> So Danny just rolled up with a new drone. He got a DJI Mini, which we're really excited to bring more places with us since it's lightweight and more compact than our old drone. The best part is we were able to sell all the other drone parts to the store, which ended up being over $200 off of our new drone. I'm really surprised the amount of options we had down here in Colombia. I guess people are getting into drones all over the world. 
So another awesome thing here in Pereira is the skate park. Check how big this thing is. It's all on a hill, kind of from top to bottom. I'll show you guys. So here's the top section, which is a really cool bank to rail there. And then it comes down here into this kind of mid-level, which is a pretty cool street section and banks over here. And then this is like a weird obstacle. I like weird. That's weird. Over here, coming down some weird angles. Over here, really good sub sub box. And then you come down here, this next level. Skate park is huge. You can go back and forth here. A whole nother area here, as well as like a bowl corner over there. And down here is kind of like the main, more of aggressive event. This sick bowl. And ever since climbing those cliffs, I've been kind of scared of this huge ramp over here. That vert ramp feels like you're going up forever. But yeah, Pereira Skate Park. Try to do some tricks for you here. We're heading somewhere very special to this area as well as for us. It's gonna get steamy. See you next time.